name is Forrest Smith and I'm the Public Information Officer for the Mesa Fire Department. And welcome to What's on Fire. Coming up, we're going to go to a junior high school in East Mesa to show you how 900 students are learning a new method of CPR. We'll also show you how the fire department is providing resources for firefighters and support staff in how to deal with traumatic events and stress. I'm in Northeast Mesa at the Mesa Fire Department Public Safety Training Facility where the fire department trains our fire recruits in learning the aspects of the job. Behind me here, as you see, we have some recruits that are in training and they're going through a very unique process in learning how to be firefighters. Now, who runs this program? Well, I'm gonna introduce you to Battalion Chief Mike Rosette, a good friend of mine here. Mike is gonna to talk to us a little more about what goes on out here. And, and I also see that we have uh, some blue shirts and some red shirts. What is going on over here, Mike? We know for us, the guys in the red shirts are always the new guys. These guys here this morning are the lateral recruits that we hired in the latest process. Um, this morning, they were actually doing the workout just like they would in, the, in a normal academy. This lays the foundation for uh, physical fitness throughout the rest of their career. Okay, now you just mentioned that they are lateral recruits. What exactly is a lateral recruit? Lateral is different from uh, a regular firefighter recruit in the fact that these guys actually have experience and actually came from other fire departments within our system, within our Valley Dispatch system. Um, this was a, uh, an attempt at a cost-saving measure to hire people that have, uh, have experience and, uh, and it, this reduces the, the time that they actually spend in the academy. Again, this helps us uh, re reduce the initial cost of hiring the firefighters and uh, also it helps benefit the other uh, departments uh, that are actually shrinking in their, uh, in their budgets as well and, and actually having firefighter cuts and we get the opportunity to uh, put those people back to work and utilize their experience. Oh, I see. So when you say the reduction of cost is this academy, I understand academies typically run as long as 16 weeks. Uh, would this, would you say, be a little bit shorter than that, much shorter? How would you describe the timeline? You know, Forrest, it's actually much shorter. Um, because they already have the Firefighter 1 and 2 um, uh, state requirement, I, uh, we actually end up involving them with uh, the day-to-day -day operations for our particular fire department, so it's much shorter. Uh, I've cut it down from, from typically a 14-week academy to about a five-week academy. It gives them an indoctrination to what our system is and how they operate here. And then from there, they'll go out on the trucks and get uh, the rest of their on-the-job on training. Okay, so before they come out here, is there any process that they go through before they get into this actual academy? Actually, of course, uh, they, they do enter the selection process. They go through a, a regimen of interviews and, uh, and, and test process and, and an evaluation for their skills. In addition to that, they, they participate in what we call an, an intern 
uh, orientation. Uh, they come to our, our facility out here for several weekends and we actually spend time with them uh, on the trucks do, running different drills to be able to identify if uh, their core values meet our organization's core values and therefore we, we uh, marry that up and, and then uh, they finish the selection process and then they're offered uh, positions within our fire department. I'll tell you what I see, one thing I'm noticing here is that when we think about the fire service and we think about firefighters, we always think about fitness as well. Oh, and absolutely. that seems to be, is that something that is a day-to-day -day thing, what we see right here? Yeah, absolutely. It's a day-to-day -day thing. Every morning they come out here and do, work, do a, some sort of a workout regimen. Um, I have got health and fitness instructors that are on staff to actually take care of these uh, uh, firefighters in the morning, run them through their, uh, through their uh, regiment of, of working out. Uh, in addition, it just happens to coincide that these health and fitness instructors are my academy uh, captains that are out here that actually are their instructors on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we also offer, or actually uh, as part of the curriculum, is uh, a uh, nutrition class that's taught by one of our members who's a nutritionist who comes in there uh, into our academy, teaches them several hours of nutrition. So the whole payoff is that in the long run, we would like to have our firefighters stay healthy uh, and uh, be able to provide good ser service for the citizens of Mesa. Okay, and briefly, how would you describe a typical day? They've gone through this fitness routine right here. Uh -huh. I'd imagine uh, this training facility sounds like it has everything you need, showers it and does. such, and classrooms. How could you describe a typical day? Yeah, first of all, they show up here at 6 o'clock in the morning, get things lined out for the day. As soon as, uh, as soon as they get things lined out for the day, we do our physical, fi physical fitness activities, meaning uh, they'll do their, uh, sometimes they do a cardiac workout, sometimes they do a weightlifting workout, and sometimes they do a calisthenic type workout. It just depends on what my health and fitness instructors have got them laid out for for the day. Uh, in addition, when we finish that, they shower up and they hit the classroom for a couple, three hours, um, depending on what, we're, what the material we're going over. After that, we go out to the grinder, what we call the grinders, the apron out back, where we actually uh, perform our evolutions for the day. You know, hose loads, hose pulls, going for, side for search and rescue. Um, also, we use the tower to, to use other types of evolutions to incorporate through their day. So it's actually a very physical, very busy day. Oh, about each day. and every day. Oh, okay. Well, I tell you, I remember going through Academy, and as you probably remember going through, it looks like things have changed since then because it used to be about lifting weights and about just running. But I notice here that it seems to be a little bit, uh, something's a little different here. I mean, I don't see weights and all that sort of thing, and they're not running around in, in yeah. big circles. Or... It, it goes back to that, um, that, that uh, we've, uh, over the years, you know, since you and I have come on, we've identified that the number one killer of firefighters is cardiac events. Um, so what we try to do is give them a cardiovascular type workout in conjunction with the strength training so that uh, it's not just focused on weights, it's focused on, on a healthy lifestyle, couple that with nutrition, and now we've, we've got a, a winning formula to keep our firefighters healthy and, and get their uh, return, get the public's return on their investment. Oh, that's great. Like I tell you, it looks like you're running a really good academy out here. Thank you very much for uh, spending time with us. Oh, absolutely. And Anytime. I look forward to visiting you sometime soon here. It's a pleasure as always. Uh, thank you very thank much. Thank you much, yeah. very much for coming out. Coming up, someone dies every minute as a result of cardiac arrest. It's the number one killer in the United States. We're going to take you to a junior high school in East Mesa and show you how 900 students are working to improve your chance of survival. Stay tuned.